Hi, my name is Kyle Naylor, and my group and I did the uh, effects of creatine monohydrate comparing to uh, creatine hydrochloride on muscular strength performance. Uh, so first off, what is creatine? Uh, it's an energy source in the, it's called the ATP PC system. It's a high intensity, intensity uh, activity. It's a short term cycle because there's rapid depletion of creatine phosphate in your body and supplementation benefits anaerobic athletes, not aerobic. Um, and it's naturally occurring in the body, creatine is. It comes from red meats. Now, supplementation for athletes does increase stores in the body, and it is known to enhance performance. Uh, right here shows the uh, phosphagen system, which is for the creatine. Uh, it really only lasts about seven to 10 seconds. This seems like it's uh, a bit longer. Now the previous research that we looked at was Arazi and colleagues, and it looked at the monohydrate creatine loading, and uh, they measured the standing long jump, the 1RM arm curl back squat, and 45 meter sprint along with the four by nine shuttle run. And they found that supplementing with creatine monohydrate did show increases in performance. Um, and the, the creatine supplementation did increase performance each day, because the study um, took measurements on day three, day five, and day seven, and each day they saw an increase in performance. The next research study that we looked at was Kramer and colleagues, and this was a three-day resistance training uh, program, and after eight days of loading with creatine monohydrate, because it does take a loading period, it was isokinetic resistance training for the leg ergometry exercise, and again, creatine group did show an increase in performance. We have Fukuda and colleagues did creatine loading again, but they looked at gender and anaerobic capacity. The VO2 was measured with the sprinting exercises, and they found that there was an increase in anaerobic sprinting capacity for men, but not for women. One of the, uh, in the discussions, one thing they talked about was actually women, um, the motivation factor, women might not be as motivated as men. The next research article we looked at was Chilibeck and colleagues the effects of creatine supplementation on anaerobic performance versus the aerobic performance in rugby players. Again, the creatine group did show an increase in anaerobic performance, and there are no negative effects at all with aerobic performance in the rugby players. Now, all those studies that we looked at showed an increase in performance no matter what, and it was all creatine monohydrate, which is the more popular kind, and it causes for a loading phase, which is one week long, because not all of it is absorbed in the body. Hydrochloride, we want to compare that to monohydrate. Now hydrochloride is a newer kind of creatine and there's not many studies on it. So it was discovered while synthesizing ethyl ester, creatine ethyl ester. Uh, no loading phase is required because it is known to be absorbed faster and it's more concentrated. So our secondary research, again, it's, from, it's supported by University of Nebraska Medical Center but this was actually an article in Muscle and Fitness Magazine, and it did say that a single dose of hydrochloride compared to monohydrate, it does increase 1.7 times higher um, the blood levels, and it's 50 times more soluble than monohydrate. So why research it? Uh, again, we want to determine the effects of hydrochloride on strength performance compared to monohydrate, um, because a lot of creatine, there's other kinds of creatine out there, and there's no studies on it saying whether or not it increases performance and there's a lot of you know, kids, lifters and stuff that go ahead and take this and don't really know whether it can help them or not. So our hypothesis is that monohydrate and hydrochloride will show an increase in performance, but one will not be better than the other. Hydrochloride will just be better because it's more biologically efficient because there's a smaller dose needed and no loading phase. So the subjects we looked at were 17 male and female, ages 18 to 25. They were all active individuals, and we sent them all a survey, and they filled it out, and we made sure they were in resistance training for at least three months, and then we made sure that they weren't taking any, especially you know, pre-workout supplements, and any supplements containing creatine for at least 30 days. Because the 30 day, there's a one month washout period for creatine. So our methods on day one and day two were our baseline measurements. Day one, the subjects performed a one RM, a uh, barbell bench press, they must touch the chest, and then a barbell back squat, which their legs must go parallel to the floor. 
Then on their day two, they did some maximal strength exercise lifts, which is 75% of their 1RM. And this was all pre-supplementation measurements. They did three sets to fatigue, and fatigue we considered that um, failure so they could no longer hold the cadence, uh, which is a one-to-one -one second ratio cadence. And between each set, there were three sets, we gave them the three-minute rest. And uh, I want to mention three minutes might seem like a lot because uh, sometimes when you're lifting it's 30 to 60 seconds, but uh, creatine actually takes a while because it needs oxygen in order to replenish the sewers in the body. I, think it believes, I believe it takes up to around like 20 minutes. So our methods after baseline testing we went ahead and the supplements were distributed in clear sandwich baggies labeled with the number one, number two, or number three, which was either creatine monohydrate, creatine hydrochloride, or the placebo, which is maltodextrin. Our subjects began supplementing the night um, or the next morning of the measurement, the baseline measurements. Two bags were, uh, per day were required. Um, the one day, uh, bag obviously in the morning and then one bag in the evening. This would split the dose. And the last dose was consumed the morning before the uh, post-test study uh, measurements. It was a double blind study, so the subjects or the researchers had no idea um, what was in the bags. And then um, supplements were randomly distributed. Now, supplementation occurred for one entire week and the subjects maintained their routines. So they lifted the way they were used to, they ate what they were used to um, because it was an individual assessment. So the group dosages, uh, the group that took mono, creates monohydrate took uh, 20 grams per day for that week because it requires a loading phase. High decrease in hydrochloride, which was two grams per day, and the rest of it made up with 18 grams of multidextrin, and the placebo was a full 20 grams of multidextrin. And that was just to make sure that the same amount was in the bag, so subjects or researchers couldn't tell which was which. Um, again, the post-test uh, study mimicked the, the exact day two of baseline testing, 75% original 1RM, barbell bench press, barbell back squat, Again, three sets to fatigue and uh, three minutes between each set. So the results that we found were that all groups along the board increased in performance from pre uh, to post test. Monohydrate, um, hydrochloride, and the placebo group, um, that's each one of these. And you can see not a huge change. So I'll show you the percent increase. Percent change, uh, this is the bench press exercise of creatine monohydrate, creatine hydrochloride, and the, uh, the control group. These are the results for the squat repetition. Again, monohydrate, hydrochloride, placebo, percent change. And you can see both creatine groups uh, drastically improved much more than the placebo group. But Despite all the small increases that you did see, there were no significant. Um, all groups increased in reps from pre to post test. Now, uh, one of the major factors for, um, I guess not a significance, is we did see an increase, but we had such a small sample size that whether there was an increase or not, there wasn't you know, enough subjects to show a large significance. But our limitations were sex differences because one study talks about males versus females and females did not show any uh, performance increases. Subject motivation, um, talking about females not being motivated, and uh, the sample size, time constraints, different researchers testing different subjects. Um, sub uh, subject supplementation consumption, we did not follow them um, and drill them on taking their supplement, we just assumed that they took their supplement and as they said they did. And then their diet, again, red meats do contain creatine. So our conclusion, there are no significance, no big significance, but there is a trend that, you know, with monohydrate and hydrochloric uh, creatine, there's an increase in performance. So then, therefore, hydrochloride will be uh, more biologically efficient. So future studies, we want to look at um, longer studies, sex differences, and include, obviously, more subjects. So my references. Any questions? <coughs> Is open for discussion. Okay. 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 Okay.
Um, they just talked about uh, motivation during exercise itself. Um, they talked about not being able to push themselves to the level that men can. And, well, okay, ladies, well, I did not say this. But I think one of the reasons they looked at was because um, the women that they took, uh, men are more used to exercising uh, in that study. So, like, the women and men that they took, men were, you know, exercising much more resistance training-wise. So, they were used to feeling that, that pain and lack of death. So in other words, possibly the effect of skin might be similar between genders, but it's Yeah, I, I don't think it's like, I don't see why it would be physiologically different between males and females. Um, I, I mean, if, if you take, you know, a male and a female, or like twins or something, they can push themselves to the exact same, you know, extent, then I don't see why there would be any difference. You also brought up a very interesting point about how CPR synthesis um, after exercise is purely used to the population. population. Yeah. Um, we know that from physiology, CPR uh, is to be resynthesized for the most part fairly quickly, but maybe that ministry is not of um, the remainder of CPR that has to be synthesized mm -hmm. um, remains. So in other words, do you think it may have you may have seen a difference if you had a longer thing. Longer rest periods? Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I think it would have shown all together, I mean, by like step by set. Mm -hmm. I mean, from pre-test to post-test, either way, that the pre-test, they had no creatine in their system. You know, at least that's what we were assuming because, you know, there's a 30 uh, day washout period. So even if, you know, we had the um, rest periods longer or not longer, mm -hmm. I mean, post-test should still show an increase because they had creatine in their system. So at least the first set, to show you know a drastic increase compared to the first mm -hmm. set on the pretest. Now, um, I think I think if we look strength wise um, along the period, like maybe not seventy five percent, but like eighty percent or something like that, and then we had them wait like twenty minutes. I think that would have shown something like that. So, because I know it says something like you, know, you need twenty minutes for the full for your full stores to get back. I mean, Exercise science professors, correct me if I'm wrong. I think it's 20 minutes around there. So, yeah, that's all right. 70% is three minutes roughly, and closer to 100% by 20. All right, well, right. right. I just <laughs> like, well, you brought the three minute thing before. That was, that was good. Next research. Just didn't have a specific Next research there. Did you wait to get your uh, subjects be before they started using supplementation in the week? We did look at uh, water retention if that's what yeah, that's what I was getting to. Because this question kind of came up just when we're talking about your. Well, I, I think yeah, another thing too is um, there's a, uh, I mean, different people. I mean, genetically can hold more stores of creatine than others can't. So we could have picked all subjects that decided not to hold anything, you know. And that's I think water retention would have been one thing that could have told us whether or not they took creatine in well or not. So. Okay. Yeah. So who would who would already have high creatine stores? Um, I mean. Someone that eats a lot of red meat. I mean, genetically, I don't know. Uh, I guess per individual. Well, not so much genetic I just failed it because I'm not sure. Yeah, well, you know, <laughs> choices like exercise or diet. Um, some of your friends anaerobically will have more creatine stores or not. Oh well, yeah, but I mean, I think I mean genetically, like if no, if no one, uh, if you took two people that didn't train like whatsoever and they decided to take creatine and start training. Um, and they both did the same exact thing. I know that there's like a genetic difference between person A and person B. Person A might, you know, show a significant increase in performance because of creatine supplementation, but then person B genetically might already have high scores or you know not have enough scores, so they don't have the potential. Right. So I guess I'm so take a step backwards and feel like it would have been good subjects for the study is not knowing genetic differences, obviously, but yeah. who would be most likely to gain creatine benefit? Well, we took everyone that. Um, was resistance training for at least three months. Now I can't say you know, that would have been the best person. I would have, honestly, if we could have gotten, we tried to get the football team, and I think that would have been the best subjects to test this on, assuming they weren't taking any um, supplementation. Well, again, maybe not, because those are the ones who already have higher creatine because of the type of training they do. Oh, I mean, so then if we washed it out, even if we washed it out, would it be? Because they're trying to be closer to their physiological right, So I see what you're saying. So physiologically, like, the person that's not active or that steps into it would show. Yeah. But then we would have to look at, like, the training effect 
Right. Um, you know, they would show an increase in performance no matter what because they haven't been training for that long. So there's so many other variables to look at. Yeah. So I get, I mean, it's kind of a mixed bag question. Any other questions? Thank you very much.